Never, ever, ever budge. Ever. Never, ever, ever budge on your price. The only way that price goes down unless you change the scope of work. If they want to pay less money, they get less things. What's up? Welcome to the party, guys. It's great to yeah. see you. Wow, I can see your faces. Big smiles. Yep. I have not done my hair today. I have not, nothing. Like, welcome to it. Business is ugly. Business hey, and yo. life together are just ugly. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rad. It's pretty rad. Um, so we have a jam-packed episode today. Um, lots of, lots of, lots of, uh, good stuff. Um, and so this, this first topic, I mean, this is going to be pretty controversial, but I think it's super important. Um, cause this is a particular pattern that I'm seeing in conversations that I've had in enrollment calls or with just like people in my family ecosystem, like I had a conversation, you know, with a family member today and some of this was being used. And, um, I think it's super important, especially in entrepreneurship. And it's, uh, I want to talk about, guilt fishing. So I'm going to kind of give you a synopsis of how I, you know, how I view guilt fishing or, you know, what my, my, why I use that jargon. And that's when people or a person says something to you to like, make you feel guilty. Right. Right. Or they, if they feel guilty, like there's guilty, there's obviously guilty energy in this, in this exchange. And to me, I believe guilt and shame are those two low vibe energies that just wreck momentum, they wreck relationships. And to me, they have no place in business because then you're living in, in feelings and scarcity and it just, you know, ripples effects and everything that you do on an unconscious level. So I'm super interested to kind of hear you guys' take in terms of like guilt fishing and your like with, with let's say with the employees, with clients, prospects, family, friends, you know, like, you know, how do you recognize the patterns one? And then what do you do to shift? Right. So I'm pretty curious to kind of hear your, hear your takes on that. All right. So Josh, I'm going to assume by your pause silence, because you are about as loud as I am, that this is something either you don't have a ton of experience in or something um, that you're a little more curious on. Guilt fishing is an interesting conversation. Um, more often than not, people are taught it um, as a sales tactic. They don't realize they're doing it. It's subconscious. It is almost always. um, How do I want to say this? People don't do it um, on purpose. They also don't do it knowing what it causes, like the after effects. They know how it feels, but they don't realize that what they're doing is what they're feeling. So I find I see it a lot. Um, I'm an avid, like repetitive um like i i like to call it out constantly on purpose and mostly for kicks if i'm being really honest i'm like oh yeah i'm like oh, you, you think my feelings have something to do with this conversation that's cute but there's a catch to that i don't believe that feelings have anything to do with business and i don't think that they have any place in it i think that your feelings are a part of your business. They're a why in your business, but they do not have any place in business, not day to day, not now, not ever. Your feelings mean nothing when it comes to the numbers that a business runs on. Man, so, anybody man, want to play devil's think, advocate? <laughs> um, before Josh, you hop in, man, I just want to say something because that's literally where I was trying to go with this is like, like, I remember you telling me this a while ago. I felt like this was like the first, one of the first things you told me because I was like, oh, I don't like this person. And then you're like, well, that has nothing to do with in terms of like securing the bag and getting through a contract, right? Because there's always going to be clients that you don't like. There's always going to be, you know, you know, situations. But if that, like for instance, with an employee, right? But if that person is like delivering like astronomical value to the business, to the bottom line, if they're a cultural fit, then like sometimes you got to make the hard decision to put the business first other than your feelings, and so I want to applaud you for that because that's the reason why I wanted to bring this up. So I think this is super important because even right now I find myself 
you know, in a contract. And I'm like, man, I really want to walk away. However, it's like, man, like what, like how much impact can I keep creating down the line? And then also that economic engine that I'm creating can also press my business forward. So it's almost like I have to remove my feelings from this situation and just look at it very objectively with apathy, but also still hold empathy for the people that I'm communicating with. Cause you still need to have empathy as a leader. So like there's, that's another huge difference, like empathy and like feelings, right? It's a difference between putting understanding someone's feelings and how that is, is measured in your equation and your emotional intelligence, but then, you know, creating that boundary that you're not drowning yourself in your own feelings and making decisions from a place of feeling that from, is this getting me closer to the goal? Is this getting my client closer to the goal? So um, this is exactly where I want to go with this. And I'd be pretty interested to kind of hear what you got to got to say, Josh, because you're in the creator, you know, the, in the, in the creative you know, world and, you know, you, you know, your clients are getting emotional, like you're in a very like empathetic uh, field. So I'm pretty curious to kind of hear your take on this. So uh, before I give my take, uh, let me ask uh, with, cause this is the first time I actually, I'm actually hearing the term guilt fish. Um, I think this is very fascinating actually, cause I'm, I'm seeing light bulbs go off in my head about my own process or my own experience. Um, is there a, I made it up, bro. This is jargon for the show, bro. Okay, I just wanted okay. to land it. So, so okay. essentially, gotcha. essentially it's when someone's like baiting you in a way, like with guilt, right? Like for instance, like, you know what? Like I'm down and out and like, Hey, like I don't have the Ooh, money right now yes. or, yes. um, Hey, like, what about me? Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's like some like energy that's like trying to like very low energy. Um, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm waiting for, okay, perfect. Um, man, in the creative space, go, oh, man. So it, it's funny, too, going going into that, because there's so much I could say to kind of really nail it down. Um, this is something that I know I've been susceptible to getting my feelings involved in my business, and it has hurt my business in a ways. Um, one of them, you know, Desmond, for instance, one of the things that we're working on is, is, working with, you know, real estate brokers and, and, and real estate investors. And, um, one of the biggest sources of friction I've had has been working with real estate agents because they're cheap in my mind. The majority of them are broke. They have a broke, if they're not broke, they have a broke mindset. Um, just, you know, keeping it a bug. That's just my personal opinion, um, of, of a lot of, of agents in the space. Um, and what they're doing, essentially you're negotiating opportunities for free, and they're, they want to guilt you in doing it in exchange for a portfolio, um, um, you know, boost. If that's the case to hell with my portfolio, I'm not worried about that. I have other clients that I can go ahead and serve this. Your $200 or, or a free portfolio, you know, thumbs up that no one is actually going to engage with. No one's actually going to reach out and want to inquire about more and more, more of my services. You know, it doesn't do me any benefit. And then on top of that, I'm establishing my own brand as a cheap brand, as a knockoff brand. So it's funny because we always talk about, um, especially in business, like we're always talking about like, oh, don't do this. Don't do that. Like I'm, I'm a firm believer when it comes to guilt fishing. Like I don't do any more homey or family discounts. I don't do those anymore because I used to do that. And I used to be that guy that was like, oh, I know you're going through a hard time, but we'll what I've had to learn the hard way, what a lot of people have, have pushed me to do is, okay, I understand. I understand that you see the need for it. As long as you see the need and you see it can benefit your business, here's what we can do. I will bookmark this place for you and I will honor the price that I'm giving you now because normally the price does go up with the more knowledge, the more wisdom, the more you know experience that not only I gained, but my team gained in the case, the case studies that we're building. So I will honor the price that I'm giving you right now, knowing that that might end up being a discounted price later on. You know, depending on how long, you know, uh, you're taking before you actually come back. But if you really believe in this product, if you really believe in, you know, what we're doing here, I will honor that. But what I will not do is I will not take a lower price than what I'm offering you right now, simply because you want me to help you out right now, because it's not that important to you. If it was that important to you, you'd find a way to figure that out. You'd find a way to get the money to, or raise the money, you know, to then be able to uh, put yourself in a position that's actually going to allow your business to win in this it, with this simple direction that we're talking about. There's many other things you can do to allow your business to grow. Um, clearly, if you're not ready for it, it it's, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of guy that understands perfect timing, right? And, and sometimes it's you making the perfect timing. So if that's not what you're, you know, um, 
you feel empowered to do right now, I understand. I'm honoring that price I gave you, but I am going to take a step back and move towards other people that do, do deserve my time and my energy. And it took me a long time to get to that point. Because for a long time, I was, oh, no, I had to get everything. And I realized that, I think Desmond actually called me out on it. I said, like, bro, you're living in scarcity, not even realizing it, because you're trying to catch everything, and you're trying not to let anything fall. And while you're doing that, you're not leaving any room for anything bigger that's actually worth, worth you holding. You know, and so once I, once I finally realized that, I realized that it's changed the trajectory of my mind, changed the trajectory of my, my business, the relationships that I have in my life. I've, I've, I love a lot of people. I love everybody, but I've, I now understand what proximity is. And I feel like that has a direct correlation with guilt fishing. You know, so I love everybody, oh, but I keep certain people at a certain proximity to me because I know that in some way, shape or form, you, your, your understanding of my just like empathic nature as a human and the fact that I want to help everybody do so much for everybody, you will take advantage of me. And I'm not in the position where I, I will never be in a position where I allow someone else to take advantage of me when I know that um, there are people out there that do see the value and are going to be able to, you know, fully step into what it is that I know that I can provide for them. And they're excited about that. They're, I'm not trying to pull anybody to what it is that, you know, they can ultimately be attracted to and pushing forward to for themselves. Dude, oh man! All right, I gotta, I gotta jump in here, and I gotta give some free game because you mentioned two things that are like are non-negotiables. One, when you honor a price, you have to have a clear expiration date. So, one of the most common things in securing the bag in a transaction is stalling. When a person is stalling, that's like one of the best objections in the world, because when that person's stalling, that means they want to do it. And the only thing holding them back is themselves. And you have to nudge or tilt the deal in your favor by helping them make the decision with a very clear deadline. Number one. So if you are going to honor that price, I would create an expiration and then I will use that as a way to follow up specifically with their desired outcome, right, to secure the back. All right. That's number one. I had to get that out there. Number two. And I love this because I'm working with a client right now who's negotiating a big deal right now, who's using this tactic. And it's great. I, mean, I can't wait for her to tell me what, what the final amount for the contract is, but it's going to definitely be five times higher than what she was, was going to quote it for, which is you waiting for it. This is, this is, this is important. When someone comes back to you saying that like trying to guilt your price down, never, ever, ever budge. Ever, never, ever, ever budge on your price. The only way that price goes down unless you change the scope of work. If they want to pay less money, they get less things. That's important for the integrity of your offer because if you do it once, they're going to expect you to do it again and again and again and again. And all you're doing is just, once, like you said, you're diluting the brand, right? Because here, here's, the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the truth. The money is going to keep coming from the same people, usually. That's why there's a beautiful thing called lifetime value, right? Usually the people who give you are easiest to, 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 to make sales with are people who have actually already experienced your brand, experienced your service, right? So that's why you have multiple transactions with the client. So if you start that relationship off with them feeling like they can get discounts from you all the time, then you're training and conditioning that client to enact that behavior. You really can't be mad at them. You can be mad at yourself. So never ever discount the original price rework the scope of work specifically for them. And I will frame it like, Hey, only for you, right? Like I'm doing this for you to make it easy for you. Right. It's very important in terms of that, that psychological thing. So, you know, that's all I got to say on that because you know, that's just two very clear things. And I feel like the audience could definitely take that and run with it and hopefully make some more money with it. I mean, at the end of the day, I want you to make money. Um, boom. I really wanted to get on that. Cause I feel like we talked about it a little bit yesterday, Josh. And I was like, yo, we got to definitely talk about that on the show. Right. Because um, I, we see it all the time in business. And I think it's, it's very important that we, you know, we talk about it. All right. So our, our major subject of today, are right, we going to switch lanes here um, that I want to talk about, you know, this is, you know, like, I don't want us to turn into a political show. I want this to be about game and, and, and value, but we get to have a little fun. Okay. And I love Elon and we're going to talk about Elon a lot because we get to, we get to celebrate great business people on this show. Cause this is called capital, you know, can't fire capitalism. So we get to talk about some capitalism here. And, um, you know, there's this, this tweet that 
you know, Elizabeth Warren made and, you know, Elon just like, just straight up, like would snap back at her. I thought it was like the most crazy thing in the world that the richest man in the world, just like (laughs) went after the Senator and is going to end up paying a $12 billion tax bill this year, which is pretty crazy. It's the largest tax bill in the United States history. He's paying this year is $12 billion. Right. And so I'm just kind of want to read you guys the sequence. And I'm pretty interested to kind of hear your take on it because we're entrepreneurs. We all aspire to be wealthy. We all aspire to provide impact and value to society. And, you know, we all come back, come from different socioeconomical backgrounds. And I think it's pretty important that we have this discussion with the audience. So, you know, the, the, the interaction starts off like this. Elizabeth Warren tweets, let's change the rigged tax code. So the person of the year, right, will actually pay taxes and start freely loading off everyone else. Man, that triggered the hell out of me, by the way. Um, non-biased, sorry. Um, then Elon responds with, stop projecting. Wow, what a personal development statement. Of all you guys are listening who are in personal development, you know what means stop projecting means, right? Your own insecurities. Um, and then he, then he said in a storm, you remind me of when I was a kid and my friend's angry mom would just randomly yell at everyone for no reason. Please don't call the manager on me, Senator Karen. <laughs> Oh man, I just thought that was so good. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty curious about like, you know, what's your takes on Elon's personality, you know, like, you know, uh, kind of the spad and, and I'm pretty interested in whoever wants to play devil's advocate, feel free, but I'm pretty interested to kind of hear you guys' take on this, this interaction. Uh, that's interesting. Um, it's interesting because I, I get where he's coming from. Uh, I do feel like the, maybe the, I like to stop projecting uh, response. Um, I honestly would have just left it at that if I was him. Um, but it's Elon. We know he's not going to stop there. <laughs> he, built, he, he built this following for a reason, right? Oh, man. And it's funny because the same people that, um, uh, I feel like if anything, he's going to gain more, he might end up gaining more followers from that. Um, more people in his tribe from doing something like that. Like from the fact that he's so politically incorrect and he's unapologetic about it. Um, I, the interesting thing about like the, and I'm not big on like the whole politics and all that, especially now when another you know, the main thing that um, was like the biggest talk right now is, is, is taxes. Right. And, and how can we, how can we, uh, you know, tax the rich more and all this. And I get that it's necessary. I believe in social capitalism where it's, I don't necessarily believe that it has to be, it has to simply be about making all this crazy amount of money and, 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 you know, putting it into these investments and this, 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 and this, you know, offshore accounts, you know, and all that stuff, just to be able to just to protect your own bag uh, rather than, and, and while at the same time, you're, you're depleting, you know, the rest of, you know, the world or the United States from um, being able to capitalize on certain benefits that you would be able to, or resources that you'd be able to, you know, provide or, you know, recycle back in. Um, at the same time, I don't necessarily think that it's his, nece- the part where I slam her for is the fact that she's, how do I say this? She is, it's the mentality, man. I know that's yeah, the part I'm struggling with. Yeah, she's, the, it feels like she's immaturely coming yeah. at him. Like, why are you getting mad about, why are you getting so mad about the person of the year having to pay all these taxes when you have a, con, you have a, a, a whole, I forgot the right word, um, a catechism or something like something like that. You have like a, a, a conundrum of, of people that, are in his same exact tax bracket that can be doing the same thing, you know, like don't, in other words, that's, that's a, it seems like it's a, it's a low hanging fruit to, for her to try to attack him when there's a bigger problem at hand than just this man, you know? So from there, that's the part where I bite back at her. Um, Cause I feel like that was unnecessary. Um, man, I don't even know. That's like my thoughts are everywhere right now. I don't even know where to start. Yeah, man. I mean, at the end of the day, like I'm not like super political. Um, I'm just a huge fan of like empowerment, like of like creating value for the marketplace and like being a person who's certified in NOP, who's been in personal development, who like seen the bottom 
and also, you know, dine with rich people, travel the world. Like I've seen all the socioeconomic ladders. I've like been in multiple countries and seen different kinds yeah. of systems. And I just can't stand um, the manipulation and the victimhood. And that's the part where I draw the red line because where I came from, if you have that mentality of like, you know, things happen to me or, um, you know, I want to look at someone else's pocket. I remember Heather told me, and I never look at someone else's pocket. I made one comment once about someone, I think it was actually Elon maybe. And she was, I remember Heather was like, yeah, stop looking like, like who cares? Don't look at other people's pockets. Who cares what's in other people's pockets? And even when I look, when I stop looking at my own pockets, I make more money, right? Cause I'm not thinking about money. I'm thinking about value and not thinking about taking from someone else. So like, if you're living in this taker energy, like I'm relying on, like I'm, I'm planning to take from someone to, you know, to rely on my livelihood on someone else's like back, right? It can even, even be in business, right? Like if you, if all you're obsessed with is taking money from people and not divide, providing value, you're never really going to progress. So for me, it's the mindset, right? Um, so, um, Heather, I know you're pretty animated over there. I mean, you can make this, you could take this anywhere you want, right? You can go off script, but uh, I'm pretty curious because I know we've had definitely a lot of different conversations in the past. <laughs> so politics, no matter what perspective, what viewpoint, what come from, what type of story is a loaded gun. Um, there are very few rules I set, nor do I live by most of them. Um, not mixing business and politics is one of them. Um, do, I have a, do I have an opinion on how taxes are done? Yep. Do I think that Warren should have re, should have made it public in battering Elon? No. But that speaks to the mental and psychological growth of a human being. And when you look at it, what must it feel like to be in her shoes? Or his, for that matter. If you stop and think about anything, never look in anybody's pockets. I can guarantee you that. Never, ever, ever look in anybody's pockets. The concept of it, the idea of it will never serve you. And if you're ever wondering like, how you may or may not feel about a subject, stand in their shoes for a second and think about, I wonder what it might feel like to be in your head. Because I wouldn't want to be her. Her entire life has been centered around fighting for attention. How might that feel? I don't care what industry and I don't care what business you do. Her entire life has been centered around fighting for attention. Look at me because attention is what drives success in her industry. That's a shitty life to live. A shitty life to live. Bar none. Now, If I were uh, for me to have an opinion on being for or against how taxes are done, how taxes are run, how the, how the world is, I would have to be for or against our constitutional rights, um, how we make rules, laws, how we enforce them, and pretty much everything else. And I'm not for or against any of it. I do my voting based on money and numbers, just like I do everything else. We also have feet. <laughs> we also yep. have feet you also can vote with your feet right super popular yep. nowadays cool all right so i'm glad we got our elon segment out the way because you know i think elon's great and you know part of this show i want us to talk about different entrepreneurs who are doing different things because i think it's super important that we celebrate success because success is fun like wanting to be successful is fun wanting to get value is fun and we should definitely you know shed a light and highlight some of these people Cool. So um, we're going to go into another segment today. Um, it's going to be our, our third segment before we go into uh, some free game. And obviously, we always got to end it with some crypto NFTs. And uh, Heather, you missed me and Josh's conversation earlier, but um, we'll, we'll talk about it at the end. But my, my NFT revealed, and I would love to show the audience and I'll also show kind of what I'm experiencing yes. with this. <laughs> um, but before we go in, I think Josh is going to love this next topic, which is like Michael Jordan. Right. MJ, an athlete, actually chose Solana to run a Web3 app for their app called Air, where him and his son are essentially doing this like, you know, this like community NFT 
you know, thing for athletes ran on the Solana blockchain because it's super cheap to run on. Like in terms of like, in this, it's super, super cheap to, you know, to, to do transactions on there. And so they're doing it. Um, Lonzo Ball, the, the vice president of New York, um, New York Knicks is also an investor in it. I mean, uh, the, uh, the Reddit founder who's really big in NFTs is also an investor of the, uh, uh, I think his name is Alex and he runs 776. So I'm kind of interested on Josh, man. It's just, this just like, you know, you're a former college athlete, man. Like, you know, what's your, what's your take on this news, man? Like, how do you see this project, like providing like massive value for creators and athletes with MJ in the brand? Um, I definitely want to read more about air. Um, I think that first of all, I think it's a fantastic thing. I love seeing more and more athletes get involved. Um, especially when they start actually putting their money where their, where their interest is. Um, yeah, definitely want to do more research on that. Cause I, I honestly think just cause they have the backing of Michael Jordan that within itself, I mean, you're talking about branding, right? Uh, the, the best brands know how to, um, leverage other brands or, you know, even acquisitions and mergers and acquisitions. And they know how to leverage those things for, you know, a bigger, a bigger ex- explosion of sorts. Um, so I think that this is actually, going to be a great thing because i know tons of other athletes that are in the crypto space already in the nft space already um that once they know that okay like the man that we've been looking up to since we were little kids is now in this thing like okay i already know i get to shift my focus to here so i think it's gonna it's gonna build a bigger sense of community around athletes um that's what one thing that i know a lot of athletes have talked about recently is becoming like their own form of um uh, become their own empire, you know, like cre- let's create our own league. Let's, you know, put our own money up. Like let's stop taking money from this group or from that group that we know are, you know, in, in, in cahoots with, you know, this group politically or that group politically or whatever. Um, you know, so the fact that they're actually in this space now, um, it shows you that, and on top of that, let's be honest, Michael Jordan wins at a lot of stuff. He might not win at everything, but like his ratio is pretty high, you know, just because his tenacity to, to, if he's putting his money somewhere or he's putting his attention somewhere, it matters. To him. So I think that with that, that within itself shows that like how many people are going to follow suit, you know, down that path. And I believe it's going to build a, a massive community, uh, probably bigger than what they even know it to be. Um, just cause you're going to take athletes, you're going to take fans, you're going to take fans of fans of fans from all these other athletes that are coming, you know, coming together and you're leveraging, you know, those other fan bases um, to ultimately, you know, provide that value. It's just as long as they have the substance that's going to then, you know, um, I'm talking about over delivering in value. As long as you have the substance, that's going to be the thing that you're over delivering value for um, in the long run. I feel, I feel like this is going to be something that's sh- like, man, it's going to, it's definitely going to change the game of sports and athletes, how, how they think about, you know, sports and how, how things are ran around building communities um, and, and working on um, decentralized um, uh, exchanges, you know, such as, you know, NFTs and, and stuff like that. So I'm excited to see what they actually create from it. Heather, what's your take? All right. So first and foremost, let me be wildly honest. Like I have absolutely no idea what they built. And quite honestly, I don't care. Not gonna lie. It doesn't matter what they build. Here's the funny perspective on this. Um, Athletes, just like anybody else, when you have a handful of notoriety, what do you do with it? What do you choose to do with the power you've been given or the power that you've earned? Um, Michael Jordan's a really good example. Kobe Bryant was a really great example of... Um, someone who as an athlete and a brand and an icon has been exceptionally responsible with their power. Um, I, I like the fact that he is bringing his son into business at a younger age. I think that's huge. Um, I have absolutely no idea what kind of value it provides. Um, but it's rare that he gets behind, behind something, in front of something, create something that doesn't provide value. So I would walk into it relatively blank for what it's worth. Um, But I'm curious to see what happens when, I mean, you're Josh, you're talking about, Oh, let's, let's build our own league. Let's build around like neat to see it. If they do part of me hopes they don't. I think sports is a really big staple for what we call the working man or like the general population. It is, it's an emotional staple that our country 
quite honestly, short, sorely needs right now. So I really hope they don't upset that part of the industry at the moment. Just yeah. probably not the best choice, probably not the best choice. But across the board, it is interesting to see what happens when you get anybody who is out of the computer space jumping into block into blockchain into decentralized communication into building community in this pl- in this place in this space like with the technology that's coming up because not only are they putting a stamp on something that says this is approved it's okay you can come with us but they're also taking two steps forward and saying okay I'm ready to learn I'm willing to listen so that's my jam on it one more thing I want to throw in there real quick. I love what you said, Heather. One more thing that I, I just realized that it might be an alley-oop, but like, man, you know, like Gary Vee, he's a type that like, he'll throw something out there and like years later, people be like, oh, wow, you did say that. I'm going to throw this out there. I'm going to say that like, I honestly believe it's going to be so big that they'll end up getting people like Gary Vee to come over and actually endorse that. Because one of the things that people don't realize when it comes to um, uh, Vayner Sports is... Vayner Sports is big on, you know, athletes off the field and, and po- whether they're poaching them, whether, they, you know, athletes are signing straight out of, you know, college. Um, they're big on athletes actually understanding stuff like the, the most esoteric stuff that like we wouldn't think about today, like tech, the technology, crypto, um, now NFTs, different things that he's passionate about. Like he loves he he, he only signed because I'm, I'm around so many people that are so tied into Gary Vee and Vayner Media and, and, you know, his brother and uh, uh, Vayner Sports and all that. And one of the things that, like, they talk about is he doesn't – they don't sign every athlete for a reason. They only sign athletes that they know have a mindset that they want to build something, you know, long-term, especially when he knows that one of the greatest players of all – I mean, you just have to understand how Gary Vee works, right? When you understand that one of the greatest players of all time is now going into a space that is relatively unknown – his, his natural heart to give is going to be like, Hey, big bro, I got you. Like, I'll, I'll show you this stuff. Just, just, you know, grab my hand. I'll, I'll, I'll just tag along with me. I got you. I'll put you in the right places. I'll put you amongst the right people. And I guarantee that will be such a tsunami of a ripple that like, it's going to change the game and the way athletes are seen. Um, uh, and I love the fact that they're even building in a fan engagement you know, platform. So I uh, like Heather said, it goes straight to, you know, giving back to the people that need it the most, the working, the working man, the working class that when they get off work and they're so stressed out of all the other things, sports is that hour, two hours, four hours of their time that they can just unwind and just not be bothered by everybody else or take their frustration yep. out on the other team or their own team or whoever, and then still be able to live to fight another day. So I think it's going to, it's going to create something massive. And I think honestly think that very soon, just based off the publicity, uh, Gary V is going to get involved. And when he gets involved, we already know he already how, is. How his, Oh, he already is. Hey, hey. Yeah. A man like here's the crazy. most recent long form blog post. And look at the new company that just went up. But I'm going to speak to something, a small bit of something that we talked about on the first episode. And that is that there's not a lot of education for athletes. I'm going to totally stick my foot in my mouth. There are not a lot of people doing it. There is quite a bit of education out there. There are like, I think, two or three entrepreneurs that are actively teaching athletes about business. But Gary's leading that. I did some research afterwards and was like, ooh, okay. So that's clearly just not something I've come across. But yeah, it is, it's rare and not a lot of people talk about it. But he is actually teaching athletes what to do with themselves off the field. Okay. See what happens. And I I think that I I love this conversation because obviously I've been pro crypto NFTs for the last few months. And like the reason why, I decided to go into the space and we're literally seeing evidence of this every single day is because it's not just money. Like money is just like, it's money. It doesn't mean anything. Like honestly, it's just a change of value. What's interesting is so much talent is like brain power is going into the space. Right. And it's not going into the space because it's already formed out. It's going to the space because people want to create more value for the marketplace. Right. And so you have these creators, you have these uh, business people and you have, uh, you know, uh, technicians in terms of like full stack developers and AI and, and just all these different people converging 
and with energy and purpose, right? We talked about purpose and passion as a new profit, but these, these, uh, I'm not, like, I'm, like the people in these projects are not doing it for the money, right? It's, I mean, obviously they, they, everyone wants to profit and create something legendary, but it's just that they, it's almost like their kids in the, in the, in the, in the sandbox creating, you know, like create sandcastles, right? And people are putting their reputation, like for instance, today, Clone X just got bought by Nike, Right. Do you think that you think Nike made that acquisition because it's cool or fat? No, no. They did it because they see where the puck is going and they are getting in front of it early. Right. And so all these people are putting their reputation on the line. All these pe- people are leaving their jobs of like after 10 or 11 years in the tech industry, making 250 or to a million dollars a year, leaving their cushiness to join some of these projects to like, you know, persevere to civilization. And the fact that Michael B, you know, not me, Michael B. Jordan, but Michael Jordan, who's worth over a billion dollars is getting involved in the space and putting his billion dollar brand online for this is a big deal in my opinion, because uh, it just makes the space better. So if you're listening to this and if you're not hip to NFTs or crypto yet, it's okay. Just get involved and start learning, right? It's very early in the space, but there's like literally every day, there's a massive amount of talented people and money moving in. I'm right now in Latin America and they are moving quick down here. I mean, really, really fast. Like, I, you know, I'm going to cafes that are, you know, crypto cafes and they're like the government, like government workers are meeting in these cafes because they're literally trying to, I wouldn't say unseat, uh, you know, America, but they're trying to create innovation and they see Web3 as that opportunity to press the frontier because it's a huge monopoly on technology in, in the world right now, right? With, with, I'm not going to say their names. We all know who they, who they are. Um, cool. So that was a great segment. I'm, I'm glad we got that out. Um, so I want to show you guys my NFTs that I, that I, my first ones, I almost sold them today, but I didn't because I have diamond hands. <laughs> Uh, if, if you don't know, diamond hands means you got, you don't let go. You have paper hands. People just like, you know, soft and, you know, it's like when some, you know, just let it go. But I want to show you guys this. I'm going to share my screen here. <laughs> and, uh, I want to get, I want you to give me one word that describes it. It could be anything you want. There's number one, one word. What should I name him? Should I name him Carl? I was thinking about Carl. Name him Jack. Jack. All right. I don't know. We're gonna put that in the docket. And then here's here's number two. I think I like this one the most. I have some mixed. I have some. Have some mixed feelings about him, but he's pretty cool. He's an eighty sweater. What did you What did you say? Jonesy. Jonesy. So this is a cool uh, project. <laughs> so we have, we have Jack and Jonesy, J, J, J and J. So this is a cool project. Um, it's an interesting utility. It's essentially allowing me to be a part owner in 150 online casinos. And uh, the people who are running this project are, uh, uh, they have over a decade's experience actually creating games for, for iGaming, right? So they create the programs that run the games online all around the world. And this is a really cool project that allows me to get some uh, share of the profit sharing. They do NFT staking so I can like stake other NFTs and like people can bet like the tokens, which is kind of crazy. I don't want to, you know, get in real trouble with SEC or anything like that, but essentially people can, you know, wager their tokens, right. In order to try to win my NFTs. So I can make money off of that way in terms of tokens, not actual dollars. Um, and then, um, you know, there's rate backs. I mean, just a ton of different, different, different utilities with this. So I joined this project just to kind of like get an idea of the flow and like execution and the sequences. And I'm definitely going to have a video of like how I viewed this project, you know, what went well, what didn't go well. And like, you know, you know, how legit is it? Right. Because there's a lot of scams and in, in not just in this industry, but everywhere. So it's easy to, 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 um, you know, buy shiny objects. Right. So yeah, you guys look out for that video. Jack and Jonesy. I like it. Dope. If anyone wants to buy it, I'm selling it for a hundred thousand dollars. So just like shoot me a DM. Cool. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. 
All right. So we're at the end of the show and uh, we always like to end each show with some free game. So uh, let's give the people some free game. Josh, what free game you got from the day? Um, yeah, this conversation has my mind spinning, bro. I thought I had something, but I was like, yeah, no. Um, I would just say, get, I mean, regardless of whether it's video, whether it's, you know, just being a creative, especially in the time that we're in right now, there's a lot of, um, maybe uncertainty in a way when it comes to NFTs. We don't know which ones are gonna you know, work, which ones aren't gonna work. I think the main thing is the thing that, and the thing that I'm proud of, I'm proud of you for. You know, is at the end of the day, you you have the best options when you get in the game, when you just try something, when you just create something. You know, just or if, if you, even if you don't know how to create something, just get in there at least get around the right people, start asking questions, start using your creativity towards something that can potentially manifest into, you know, a J and J, uh, you know, NFT, um, that can end up making, it can make you a lot of money. It can just start a big community for, you You know, it can just ignite a passion that you didn't know was inside of you. Or maybe that little thing that you've been drawn since you were a kid is that one thing that ends up being the thing that everybody else wants, you know, it just, it was, it worked in perfect timing. Um, so I think it's just getting in the game by you getting in the game, you have options to be able to enjoy and do different creative things. Um, cause creativity is abundant. It's not scarce, you know, it's not, <coughs> excuse me. It's not just, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. It's, 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 um, it's ever growing, you know, so get yourself in the position where you can just, if you don't know what it is, start diving deeper and asking more questions, understanding a little bit more about it. I'm doing that on a daily basis. I feel like, because I, I still don't even understand fully what NFTs are, but I'm at least putting myself in the position and surrounding myself around people like you guys that, you know, do know this stuff. Um, and, and, um, are moving in the direction of, you know, community and what, you know what's possible in this space. So especially if you're creative, I highly, highly, highly urge you to start, just get in the game, just figure out a way of just like, you know, um, figure out what first question you want to ask and then go to the next question. And then the next question, you know, just, just, just simplify the process. Um, and in doing so you realize like, wow, like the people that are making the most money from what I'm seeing and the things that the, the, the NFTs that are, you know, getting the biggest hits from a creative side are the ones that are like, they're not even intricate, crazy 3d rendered, um, um, you know, NFTs. It's like, very, some of them are like the most simple things out there. It's like, did you just draw that? Like you didn't, you didn't actually go like, what did you use to even create Did a kid create this? How was this? How did this just sell for $9.4 million? But yeah, the thing that has like this full on rendering and all that, like people simplicity in this space, I love it because it keeps people honest to, you know, whatever really does, uh, uh, whatever really does attract or ignite them rather than it being about the thing as creatives that we're typically known as like, oh, this, oh, this is so pristine. It looks like this. It looks like that, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, just get in the game and figure out from there, whatever's inside of you and, you know, allow that, allow that creativity to flow. And then from there, you'll at least be able to be in a position where those options will give you more op- those, I'm sorry, where your creativity will then give you those options that you're looking for to then, you know, I guess, go whichever way you want to go in this space. But you have to get in the game first before you can ever, you know, uh, continue, you know, working on the game. Desmond, did you freeze? No, I'm just absorbing all of that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, just yeah. trying to get in the game. I'm getting in the game. <laughs> So when it comes to free game, um, I think what I have more than anything, especially based on some of the conversations that we're bringing up in these newer episodes is less about game and more about, here's a friendly piece of advice for everybody out there. There's no, there's no such thing as failure. There's learning. There's, like not effective thing. There's no such thing as failure. Like anybody who is following like blockchain and DeFi and crypto, everything, like you're starting to see what's possible when a group of people say, and I'm going to coin, um, I'm going to coin Michael Strasner, 
Michael Strasner, when you say, oh, what the fuck, go for it anyway. Just, they followed. They had a passion. They had a statement. They stood with a very clear viewpoint and executed on what they wanted to do. Look what happened. Everybody, baseball card trading, Gary Vee talks about it all the time. Everybody's something is executable. You'll find out whether or not it's effective, if the market's right for it. There's lots of things like that. Those all account. But it's not failure to put your all into something regardless of the outcome. So jump. Essentially, that's the thing. Just jump. Yeah, boom. Huge, huge. Um, so I guess I gave some free game earlier in terms of have deadlines, right? With your offers in order to create some urgency to secure the bag and then never, ever discount yourself. Renegotiate what's delivered, but never, ever discount yourself because you're conditioning your clients to always ask for a discount and they're not buying it because they weren't, you know, they get the value. They're buying it because of the price. And it's honestly come with some of the worst clients to ever to serve right? Because they have to be in the game from start to finish in order for you both to see the desired outcome come to flourish it, right? Both of you got to have skin in the game. Um, You know, really outside of that, I really want to also add that, you know, we mentioned about looking at other people's pockets. And I think that's something super important that I want to leave you guys with because, you know, in the world of entrepreneurship, being a business owner, you see people, you know, around you who might be doing better than you. You might have, you know, imposter syndrome is pretty common. It doesn't matter what stage of the business you're in, there's always someone doing better than you. And it's pretty easy to fall into the trap of like envy and looking at like what other other people have. And so my my advice to you is whenever this is something I do, literally have to check myself sometimes daily, man, you know, it depends on what season it is is, you know, whenever I have those thoughts of like, oh, what is this person has something I don't, I simply try to reframe of like, well, what can I provide to the market, right? Like what problem can I solve? Like I literally just ask myself the question over there. Okay, what problem can I solve? And like accept it. I don't, I don't lie to myself and say, I, I didn't have that thought. I just accept I did and I immediately pivot. And so if you find yourself in a situation, looking at other people's pockets, just say, okay, look, I caught myself slipping and immediately change the conversation, not about money, but about value. Because you stay up obsessed with value. I, I, I hate giving guarantees to, you know, open guarantees, but if you stay obsessed with value, you will eventually strike gold, period, right? Like period. And it's easier than you think. There's a lot of people got a lot of problems. <laughs> a lot of people got a lot of problems so um thanks for joining us hopefully you enjoyed today's episode um we always love having you don't forget to leave a review a rating share comment if you want to come on the show holler at us on social media come to the site let us know we'll love to have other entrepreneurs and add them to our playground and uh change up the conversations as we go so we're tuning out <laughs> Peace. If you call me.